lovers, God forbid, bad, bad things. Fine librarian song right here on the Super Morning Show. This morning we already have a thousand studio. Madam Claire Marie, we are first a lady of the Republic of Liberia. Welcome to the Super Morning Show, ma'am. Thank you so much. How are you this morning? I'm fine. <laughs> Happy to be here with you. And it's good to have you with us this morning. We appreciate uh, that you're with us this morning. Thank you so much. Much appreciated by Neil, so thank you. Great. So, we know you've been involved with a lot of things uh, since you um, assumed this responsibility as First Lady of the Republic of Liberia. But tell us a little bit about um, who Claire Maria was before she became First Lady of Liberia. <laughs> yeah, quite interesting. Um, as, as I guess as you all know, I'm, I'm Jamaican born. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, my family migrated to the U.S. Uh, we later, me and my brothers and sisters later went there after my father died, and um, I, I, I guess I had my share of challenges also growing up um, in New York City. I, I, I did all my schooling in New York. Um, I have. I have two restaurants and a warehouse that supplies restaurants. I, I cater to my kids. My kids are everything to me. Um, before being a first lady, I've, I've always had interest in children and um, the disadvantage in, in helping people who are in need. Uh, I'd like to know about um, you, you're married to the president of the Republic of Liberia. Tell us a little bit about your love life. How did you meet the president of uh, okay. the Republic of Liberia? I was a young girl at the time, <laughs> working in um, <clears throat> Chase Manhattan Bank in New York. I, I, I was involved with sales with the bank. And at the time, I knew George's manager, Elijah Sidibe. Um, and he, he, I, I handled his, his accounts for him. And he brought, it was during the um, 1992, is it 1992 of December? Um, he brought George in, 1991 of December, he jo brought George in to open a bank account. And um, I was there. I, George, I guess he was elated to, to see me. And um, he asked me, after I did his bank account, he asked me, can he keep in contact with me? Um, because he's in Europe. And the time difference, um, if he can call me to, to, to check on his accounts, I told him yes. And he ended up calling me like midnight, my time in New York. And we started having a friendship on the phone. And, you know, after that, I went over to Europe to visit him. We visited Jamaica together. And that's how it started, you well, know, with George. Great. So how many years now have you been married? Well, it's been 25 years, to be to be honest. Um, we got married in 1993, June 1993, and um, after that I moved to, to Europe. Um, throughout, I, I experienced most of his soccer career in Europe. Um, <clears throat> there are times I was always in Liberia or in Ivory Coast or Ghana um, with him and the national team. A lot of that people don't know because, uh, like I've said before, I'm always you know, I'm not the person to be in the limelight. I always like to put myself behind because I work so so hard for my family for them to, to succeed in whatever in whatever they're doing. So uh, throughout the years when Liberia was going through crisis, I was there. I was there. Most of the national team, the older players from the national team, they know me very well. And most of them know me as Auntie Clar. So a lot of the, the new folks, the younger folks may not have... Um, known about me because I, I wasn't coming to Liberia regularly because while, while George was here after his soccer career and he decided to, to go into politics and as much as I supported him, which people believe that I didn't, I had to, I had to be there for three kids who needed me to be there for them um, to make them good human beings in society. I have an 18 year old now. At that time he was very, very young when George decided to, to get involved with soccer. So I had to be there. Hmm. 25 years and still counting and I hear you say that um, you know the person who likes to be in the limelight Did you ever see this coming that you become the first lady of the Republic of Liberia? No, quite honestly. No, because um, We spent so many years in Europe with George going back and forth to the national team traveling with Paris Saint-Germain traveling with Milan that the only thing I dreamt for at that time was to have my husband to myself 
to be quite honest. That's what I wanted. I'm very much family oriented. I, I believe in family. I believe in um, um, relationships. I believe in my kids. So all I expected after it was for George to probably move to the U.S. or we decide to come to Liberia together and have you know a quiet life together because the football life was so hectic. And then he told me he wanted to get involved with the politics, and I supported him as much as I can. Being and now you're the mother of the nation after all of the support to your husband throughout this hectic electoral process. You are now the first lady of the Republic of Liberia. How does it feel uh, being uh, the mother of a nation, especially Liberia? In the beginning, when I uh, had some inclination that George um, might have won the, the, uh, the election, uh, it probably didn't dawn in me the responsibility that I would have or what it would be like. I, I think it, it, it really hit home when after the inauguration, to be honest. And um, I realized that I am a mother to all, all of Liberia. These are people who are dependent on me. Um, um, I have to be there for them, to give them love. So for me, right now, it's something that I embrace. It's something that I love doing. Anything to do with humanity, I love. So uh, it's not a challenge at all at this moment. <laughs> I hear you say it's not a challenge. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, because you, you you tell us that you are a very passionate person about people, you're a family-oriented person, and you assume that, okay, you're the mother of all Liberians currently. But uh, since you've assumed this role as uh, the First Lady, uh, you've been involved with uh, many uh, humanitarian work. Um, what, is, uh, what is your focus? Well, my focus, uh, I, I, right now, if you look at my foundation, Clark Hope Foundation, my focus is basically to help the disadvantaged people. That's, I, am, I am for the grassroots people, you know. I'm for the people who, who need some form of hope, who wants to be lifted, who wants to be integrated back in society. Those are the people that I'm for, the children, the elderly who are not able to help themselves, you know, the youth in the street. I mean, I can't save everyone. I can't do everything, but that's my mission. Are there specifics you want to change? Um, in terms of um, the, I've gone through the orphanages, and to be quite honest, I, I, I was surprised at the condition of the orphanage that children are going through. I'm surprised at the fact that children aren't eating three meals per day. I'm surprised that there are so many young girls in the street who are not educated, you know, and I want to be able to, to implement programs that will help these young girls in the future. Um, those are things we're working on now. So there are so many issues um, with, with, with the youth and the elderly and the children that I, I want to be totally involved with. I hear you talk about young girls, the elderly. Um, I know um, things are kind of different in Liberia, mm -hmm. um, comparing that to the Western world. Um, what are some of those things that you you envisage um, for the young people of Liberia, the elderly people of Liberia, as you go through this journey? Well, well, in terms of the young people of Liberia, when I see the young boys around, um, um, uh, it's a situation that really burns my heart because most of them, um, I, I have to be careful what I say, most of them, we, we, we want to be, be able to provide jobs for them so that they can be self-sufficient. And I know those things are going to take time. It's not going to happen within three months. For the, for the youth, for the young boys, for the girls, I, 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 I want to develop programs where I can bring these girls into a facility and help train them and educate them so that they can later be integrated back into society so they can gain respect for who they are instead of people looking down on them. Um, and, and with the elderly, I've just gone out to Buchanan and I've been out to, I've, I've seen the elderly home for the blind and the elderly and I, I wasn't impressed at all. You know, because you have to realize that we're all going to be old one day and we have to start uh, uh, developing things that will benefit us. It's, it, it will be a start for me. It's not, I'm not going to solve it immediately. Maybe as I, I do these things, other first ladies to come will continue to build on that. So in terms of the elderly, I would like for us to provide homes for them, to have them to, to provide proper care for them. Because what I saw in Buchanan, it was something that really broke my heart. 
Well, I hear you talk about the elderly, the young people. Um, is it going to be something you're targeting from county to county, or you got, you got special counties you're going to start from first? Most definitely. Um, to start in Monrovia, it's easy because I'm here every day. This is where I'm based. Um, one of the reasons I decided to go out to Buchanan is because I wanted to show people it's not only about Monrovia. I want to work with all the counties. Whatever I do in Monrovia, I want to do the same thing in Buchanan. I want to do the same thing in, in, in Grand Jitter, Riverside, all these different places. But it will, it will obviously take time. It's not something that I'm going to just get up and do immediately, you know. I've started working with the orphanages here in, in Liberia. I'm actually doing work. A lot of people don't know renovation is going on with some of these orphanages. I've started distributing food to some of these orphanages today. As you know, for the elderly, we're distributing food for them also. These are just little things that I'm doing just to show people that somebody cares about you, somebody loves you, somebody have your back. It may not be great, but eventually, you know, the long-term projects, eventually they will come and these people will benefit from them. What are some of those orphanages you've uh, visited? So uh, right now we're working on um, um, Calvary there. The, I don't have the list of many of them that we're doing right now, but um, we're working right as we speak. Construction is going on to improve the, the living conditions for the children in, in three of them as we speak. And I've taken on a, a, a school uh, in my community, Painesville area, also trying to help them. Um, what do you want to do uh, in the school there? Well, I went to the school. Um, uh, Miss Brenda invited me to the school to read to the kids. And I saw the condition of the school. And then the weekend after I went back and I, I brought them ice cream because I just wanted to put a smile on their faces. And um, just looking at the, the condition of the school, I, I couldn't just walk away, you know. And I spoke to the people who were involved with the school and I have took a construction company there. Some of these things I'm doing on my own. You know, some of these things I'm doing on my own because I, I, be, I believe once, once, once you see a condition, you see people are living in, in certain condition, I, I, the person that I am, I can't just walk away and say it's okay. So it's just small renovations I'm doing just to make sure that the kids, when they come to school, they're comfortable there. And I hope to continue that also. Okay, so your focus is um, on finages making sure that uh, the children are well treated. Uh, what have you observed for which you have this passion for, for orphans? What have I observed yeah, here, in here in Liberia? Um, I think I have a passion for kids from before I came to Liberia. It's not just coming to Liberia why I have a passion for kids. I've been helping disadvantaged kids. Um, even though I've grown up in the States, I've lived in the States most of my life. I've gone back to Jama Jamaica several times. I've helped girls' home, boys' home. This is something that I've been doing. You know, in my community in New York, we have children who are on the streets in New York. You know, my brother and I started a, a soccer program just to take them off the street. So this just has not begun since I've been in, 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 in Liberia. I came and I wanted, because I saw myself close to being an orphan. You know, I didn't have a lot. I didn't feel loved by a lot of people. And the orphanage, I know there are many other disadvantaged kids around or people around, but I wanted to see what, what, what the situation is for kids within the orphanage. And when I went there, number one, their condition, their living condition, for me, it's deplorable. You know, I would not want my child to live there. And if I don't want something for my, my child, I don't want it for others. So, you know, I, I found out that the kids aren't eating three times a day. For me, that's very sad. So they should eat three times a day? Definitely, and more if they want to. Okay. You know, they so, should not be limited to eating meal only once a day or even twice a day. They're children, we, we want them to learn, and in order for, for them to learn and be educated, they have to have nutrition, they have to be healthy. Are the orphanages are government-run orphanages or private-run? Yeah, orphanages? most of them are government-run orphanages. Okay. So I, am just, I just go there to help, to see what I can do to help them, and these are some of the things I've seen. Okay, so um, uh, talking about the elderly, um, have you done some work with some elderly people in, 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 Monro in Monrovia or Montserrado County, and are there plans to go outside Montserrado or in, into other counties? Well, I, I've, I've, well, today is, for instance, something that we're starting. We're giving out dry food, rice, um, milk, cornmeal, I believe, um, 
oil to the elderly. It's just to say, you know, somebody cares, just to take off some of the pressure on them. It's not going to solve all their problems, but, you know, if I feel that I can do something to help in whatever way, I will take the initiative to do so. Um, I've gone out to Buchanan, as I've mentioned before, and I saw the, the home for the blind and the elderly. I wasn't impressed at all, and I've decided that I've asked the, the superintendent if he can um, possibly find me a piece of land where I can probably construct uh, a new home where I can combine these people so that we can later have aides go in and try to help them because most of these people seem like they're on their own. Their nails, their hair, they, their, the, the, their, their condition, it's, it's not good. So whatever, in whatever small way I can help. This Why is, is it important for. to take care of the elderly? It's important for, to take care of the elderly, to set an example for our kids, to let them know that we will one day get old and we will need them to pay attention. I've, I've, my first job as a nurse, I worked in a, 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 a nursing home for the elderly. And I, I see the need of these people. I worked there for roughly six months before going on to Jamaica Hospital. And I see it's, it's a priority. It's a priority for our community. And I just, you know, my heart goes out to the elderly, especially seeing them. Some of them are hungry. Some of them are not, not, not clean. And somebody has to do something for them. And I choose to do that. Now, I know a lot of people are listening to you across Liberia right now. And uh, they're wondering, uh, especially the elderly people in other parts of the country. Um, and so I want to know whether there are plans to reach out to other counties also. Oh, definitely. I can't. Like I said, Monrovia is not Liberia. It's convenient for me because I'm here, but this is why I'm, I'm, I'm starting my project for the elderly. Well, I've, I'm starting today in Monrovia, and I, my, my second project will be in Buchanan for the elderly. And the third? And, and <laughs> <laughs> wherever the, the, the spirit moves me, I'll go. I told my, my office staff that once per week, I want to visit a county, and that's something that we have to do. Tell us a little bit about this uh, 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 Clare Hope Foundation. Well, Clark Hope Foundation, it's basically what I've said before, it's, it's just uh, seeking out the disadvantaged people in our community and helping them and making them feel loved and making them feel that they have hope for tomorrow where we can um, integrate them back in society. Um, the, 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 the young people here who are, I, I did the feeding for the, I don't like to use the term because I think it's a derogatory term for the, the young people who are addicted to drugs. We went recently and we, we did some feeding of these people. And um, you know, uh, when I did that, I, I saw a few comments on my page um, that said, oh, food is not everything. No, food is everything. You know, food is everything. Food is making people feel that they're loved, especially if it's not available to them. So, I mean, we can sit and we can criticize what the little things that are being done, but it's important to the people and those people, in collaboration with the, the government, you know, I want to be able to provide a facility where we can rehabilitate these people, you know, to let them feel, because they want to be rehabilitated. They just don't know how to do it and they're not getting the help to do it. So the long-term plan is to construct a facility oh, where you can take care of these definitely, people. Definitely, definitely. I can't do it by myself, you know. So this is where the government comes in, where I go and I advocate for the advocate for these people, mm -hmm. so that the government will see the importance of having these things for the drug addicts, for the the people who are living on the street. Right now, my foundation, my plans are to um to to have a home for children, you know, and to have also a home for girls, a training facility where when I bring these girls, when I when when I, I'm trying to take these girls, young girls off the street, have an educational uh, sector for them and also a training facility that can help them. Once I'm able to help them, to re rehabilitate them, to let them know that you don't have to be on the street. Someone loves you. Someone is willing to take a chance with you. Someone is willing to do whatever, what, whatever I can to put you back, to integrate you back in society. Then we'll see the difference. But those are long-term goals. It's not something that I can start immediately because most of these things require funds. And I have to get funds to do that. Most of what I'm doing, I'm, I'm using my own funds to do it. Hmm. Great. Okay, so let's talk about. I uh, hear that you 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 have uh, some some experience in the medical field. What is your perception about um, the, the other day you were at the um, the Joint Kennedy Memorial Hospital? Uh, we learned about you giving out some uh, donations there. You were at the Redemption Hospital. What is your plan now? What, what do you make of the healthcare sector? 
the country? Of the country, I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, everybody's trying to do the best that they can with whatever they have um, with the health care system that we have here. I'm sure it can, everything needs improvement, and this is why we're here to work on that. Um, um, I, I grew up in the U.S. I work in the medical um, field where, you know, care is, proper care is given at all times. And you're able to walk in the hospital whenever you want to, if you're sick without pain, even though they, they, they'll bill you later, but you, you don't have to have money to get the care you need. And this is something that we have to have here in Liberia for the people. Um, there are many um, health, I, yesterday, for instance, I went to the, the, to the groundbreaking of a healthcare system by Snyder Group in, in Caris, Ca Carisburg. 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 And I think that's fantastic for the community, you know. We have to go out there and promote health with our people because sometimes I'll see a lot of young people are dying in Liberia because they're not getting the proper check. Um, blood pressure, diabetes, um, um, so many things are happening to them and they don't know. So having improving the healthcare system, I think, in Liberia is a must. It's something that we have to do. Okay, we go back. We we'll go a little bit back, a little bit to soccer, and then in your, your your plans for for because I, I heard you involved with also um, a kids in soccer, and I want to know about female soccer, especially in Liberia. Your plans, but um, tell us about the reception you get from Liberians since you assume this um, uh, position. Oh my gosh! Um, in the beginning, as I've said before, I was very nervous about um because you know i've heard so many negative things also but i try to stay focused and in, in me coming to liberia now and taking over my position as the first woman i just can say thank you so much liberia for the love um i, I i'm surrounded by great people here and because of them the 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 the, the country is getting to know me better and when every, every time i go out i feel the love being generated from the people so I'm quite happy with the reception that I've gotten from the Liberian people. So Liberians are giving love back. Oh my my gosh, it's incredible. It's incredible. I know everyone is not there yet. <laughs> and I truly hope that with my work they will see and I'll be able to convince them. And I understand why there are a few people who are skeptical about uh, me. I, I think sometimes it's, it, maybe it's a bit political, but I try to remain focused and do what I have to do. Um, in terms of serving the people, and I know in, in, in time to come, I'll win the non-believers over. I like it when you say you try to stay focused because Liberia, everything is politics and people are political about everything that happens in the country. Whatever you do, you have critics and, yes. and you have people who support you. But it's good that you say that you appreciate the love uh, Liberians are giving you. I really do. Okay, let's talk about soccer a little bit. Um, are there plans for um, young children in Liberia? And I want you to narrow it down to female soccer in Liberia. Yes. Um, I recently went to a symposium in, um, in Morocco. And uh, in, in attending the symposium, we had to go through a series of um, uh, uh, training sessions there. And um, the, the, the Secretary General of uh, FIFA recommended for CAF to, to make me ambassador of female, to empower female uh, soccer players in Liberia. And um, I basically want to, I have to meet with her. I'm going to, to Zurich in May to meet with her. <laughs> and I'm hoping to convince her to, to start doing whatever she has to do to help me to, to develop the program here. We want to develop a grassroots program for kids. Uh, around the age of three, especially women, like you say. Three? No, no around the age of six. Okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. um, because we want soccer to start from the grassroots with our, with our women, okay. with our women's team. And then we can probably have it gone on to the, the high school level where they can then be chosen from the high school level to go into maybe national teams and um, local teams and then the national team. So that's the plan I have with um, Fatma Samura, who she's planning to visit Liberia. And once she visits Liberia and they do their assessment, then I'll have a better, uh, they'll have a better idea of what Liberia needs and they'll be able to help me to implement my programs here. Okay, I know we have 
uh, girls playing uh, soccer in Liberia, and it is not you know something that people talk about mm. widely as compared to that of the um, the, the, the 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 male soccer uh, the play here in Liberia. Everybody is passionate about football and and what if you and I hear you say you take uh, your your vision is to start with uh, children who are six years of age. And, and, and making sure that they learn how to play. And I'm sure this is a huge, um, uh, this is huge because at age six, we don't have young uh, children thinking about female soccer. We'll make them. So, so you'll make them. Uh, is it that you're going to have somewhere where they're going to be and they have to go to school and, and, and after school they're going to practice and what have you? Because a lot of people now might be getting involved in that and be interested in knowing how you you want this to go on. Yeah, I mean, I'll have people around me who can assist me better with that in, in, in terms of seeking these things out. What I want to do is start intramural programs. Not that I'm forgetting about the young people who are playing now. Of course, I'm going to do things to support them in whatever they're doing. But to make soccer stronger, we have to start small. We have to start because a lot of these young ladies now, they're not getting the exposure that they need. Um, I was told that they're not getting the training that they need. So we will continue to build on what they have, you know. But for the, for the, for the young kids coming up, we will, sit, we will seek them out. We will start intramural program within the community. And I hope I'll have, I'll, I will definitely have people to assist me with that. And in doing so, we will be able to build on that. I hope. Okay, good. So for the females, do we have plans also for the uh, the males? I mean, males intramural can, can will consist both of males and females. But we because we were talking about female soccer, we were focusing on that. Okay. But intramural it can consist of both. And as 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 the girls, as they get older, maybe around the age of twelve, thirteen, they can then break away from the boys. You know, boys, male soccer, male soccer is never a problem in most of these countries. They're given the recognition, they're given all the tools necessary. So it, it, we're trying to build with the woman because that I know will build confidence. I see what soccer does to my son, my 18-year-old boy, you know, in terms of his personality and the way he sees himself. So because I'm focusing on girls and I want to um, empower a woman, that's one tool that I'll use to empower them. Why are you, why are you focusing on girls? Because girls are very close to my heart. Not that boys aren't. I have boys, and I love my boys. But um, I, I guess just going around Liberia and I see how, uh, how how some of the girls are. You know, it really breaks my heart, and I want to. I, me being a woman, I know what it's like, and I just want to be there for them. You know, I have boys, and I love. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love boys, but I want to focus on the girls. Well. We have with us in the studio, First Lady Ambassador Claire Marie Weir. She's our guest. This is the Super Morning Show on ELBC. And I'm sure you have lots and lots of questions for uh, the First Lady. But uh, we will open up the lines a little bit uh, to the close of, of this program so that you can ask her a few questions you want to ask uh, uh, right here on the Super uh, Morning uh, Show. Um, well, Madam Weir. I hear you talk about how passionate you are about girls, how passionate you are about the elderly. You talk about uh, those um, um, children in the streets, um, and you want to make sure that they are taken from the street. This is a huge, huge um, uh, work you have to, to do, especially in a country of ours because this is not something a lot of people pay attention to previous governments paid attention to so how are you going to get around this because it's really really huge uh, like i said i can't do it alone you know i am going to advocate for these people that's my job you know financially i can't do it by my own um uh i just had the minister of youth go with me to donate food to the to the orphanages on when did we do that on saturday um, I don't intend to do it alone, but imagine, since I've taken over First Lady, a lot of people don't know, I have, I sleep very little. I sleep very little. You know, I sleep very little. I, I, I can't say I get four hours or five hours per night, and that's the truth, you know, because I'm thinking about ways that I can help. Even if I don't accomplish all my goals, at least I'll start the foundation of everything, you know, and someone else can build on that later. But... I, I go with my heart, you know. 
I have to let so the, the most important thing to me right now, and maybe most won't agree, is to let people know that I love them. That's the most important thing to me. You know, love cannot put food on their table. Love cannot buy them education. But it does something to you when you know that people love you. And this is, this, that's my aim, to let them know how much I love them. It has nothing to do with where I'm from. It has nothing to do with who I am. You know, it's something that is instilled in my heart. And I go by what my heart tells me to do, you know. So I know I can't do it on my own. Maybe this is why I have so many sleepless nights, you know. But I have to do something. And it starts with showing people, the elderly, the, the disadvantaged youth, the children in the orphanage, that someone loves you. The people in the orphanage who are also taking care of the kids, you know, they have to know that someone cares about them. Someone care about the work that they're doing with these children. So it starts all here for me. And then everything is going to fall in place because I know, I know God is leading me and I know that's what he wants me to do. So once I do the right thing, things will fall in place. The food will be taken care of. The education will be taken care of. All of the things that these disadvantaged people desire will be taken care of with the help of myself and the Liberian government. I am confident about that. The last time I listened to you or I watched you or I saw you at the Winners Chapel Church when uh, it was your birthday, I heard you tell uh, uh, the people in the church that um, I want you to pray for me and my husband uh, to do well for, for the Liberian people. Why is it important uh, uh, for people to pray for you? <laughs> it's always important to pray <laughs> because we know, I know, I know the challenge that my husband faced. I know his heart. I know how much he cares for Liberian. I know the challenge that I will face. I know that there are believers in me and non-believers in me. And I just ask him to pray so that I will have the strength to continue to, to be of service to them. This is what I want them to pray for. Pray for strength for me because I know with me things will be better. I won't solve all problems. I will say that a hundred times. But I know with me, I know the heart that I have. You know, things will be better. And everything I do, I do for the interests of the people. I'm not gaining anything from this. Okay. The First Lady of the Republic of Liberia, Madame Claire Mariwia, we call her Ambassador. She's Cap, uh, Cap right? Cap, Cap. Ambassador, um, Madame Claire Mariwia. She's here today telling us about uh, what she's been involved with, her plans for the nation, and uh, how, what she, what do you expect uh, what is your, what do you, how do you want um, to see Liberia um, the, after the first six years of your, 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 your husband's uh, presidency? You know what I envision? Yeah. I, I, and I see it every day. Okay. And I'll tell them, I'll tell the guys, we are going to be okay. I see all the youth, the boys in the street now that we see, I see them working. I see what George is promising the people about agriculture. I see that's happening. Most people can't see, but I see it happening. I see Liberia beautiful where people are working and busy and doing their thing and not, you know, not focusing on negativity. I just, I just see a different Liberia. I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I see it and I know it's going to happen because Liberia has people right now who cares, you know, it's not about pockets and the money, especially with me and my husband. We don't need the government's money. And when you have people who don't need the government's money and who have the interests of the people, it can only go upwards. I see how many people want to come in to help Liberia. The doors are open now, you know? So I, I, and I envision a beautiful, Liberia is already a beautiful place. I envision, I envision all of us just being, just living. It's, nothing is ever perfect. I hear you, know? you say that uh, you and your husband have this vision and you envisage a very uh, wonderful Liberian. What would be that message from you also to those who are also a part of the government, who your husband has called on board to be a part of it? Because you have a vision to make this place a better place, but you have to work with other people. What would be your message also to those people? No, I think so far they've been doing a good job. You know, I'm not going to hit anyone. This is a new government, and I think uh, my interaction with some of the ministers, I see that they have Liberia interests at heart too. 
So it's a new government, I think, in time um, for the ones who I don't know of any who's doing anything against what my husband, um, the president, wants. But I, I, I see them cooperating with him. And, and he's very... He's very strict about what he wants and know what he wants. And a lot of people think that the president is easily influenced. No, he knows what he wants for his people. He knows he wants to redeem Liberia, and he will do that. You know, so I see the government, the young government that he has chosen, they're working very well with him. So I compliment them also. Thank you so much. The First Lady of the Republic of Liberia, Madame Claire Mariwia. She's CAV Ambassador. She's right here with us telling us about it. When the lines are bustling this morning i know you want to talk to your first lady uh this morning on the super morning show um, um we have with us in studio you know it's a um a very big personality the first lady um of the republic of liberia she's right here with us madam claudia before i go to the lines is there anything i didn't touch on you want to talk about well uh, i just wanted to make something clear to the uh, to the public is that in terms of the government funding or or I they've given me um they've allotted to me five hundred thousand US but to be quite honest I haven't I have not gotten it so I just wanted to let everyone know that they've allotted that to me but I have not gotten it and most of what I'm doing out there is from my own funds. Why have you not gotten it? Uh, I don't know it's just it's just a lot of red tape and to get it and for me because I have the I have the the interest of the people I can't wait for the government to give it to me because there are so many people that I've gone out there and I've seen who, who I want to help and who I I, I, they, I can't wait I don't know when that money will come in and really so you're don't. just passionate about helping the library and people and so you're going into your own pockets absolutely. and making sure that you, you 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 help them in whatever way you can no absolutely absolutely um I, I don't know if this will sound funny to you but if I can just read a Bible verse to you Go ahead, you know please. it's it's first John 3 verse 17 and 18 and it says but whoever has the world good and sees his brother in need and shuts his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in words or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. This sums it up. I, ca I, I, I cannot have, and I see people who don't have. I've always been like that from a little girl. It's not something that is instilled in me only because I'm a first lady now and I'm you know, trying to impress everyone and no, it's something that's within you. If you don't have that in you, you're not going to share with people. You know, that's I prefer, so I prefer, you know, with my kids, with my husband, with my friends, with my family, I prefer to give them. Sometimes I leave myself out. So to, in, in seeing these kids, these disadvantaged people, I cannot go to my bed at night knowing that these people need something from me and I have it and I'm holding on to it. You know, until the government decide to give me whatever is necessary for them. No, I have to move. Like I said, I move with my heart. Uh, this morning on the Super Morning Show, where we have with us in studio first a lady, Claire Marie. We are to this caller now. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Patty. I follow from uh, New Jersey. I appreciate our beautiful first lady. And I pray that God give her more wisdom and long life. When I asked for her nursing school, she opened uh, the time we are nursing institution. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. I'm going to take just one more call, and then i come back to uh, the first lady. Let me see who's that lucky caller. Good morning. Good morning. Move away from your radio, please. Good morning. 
to the colors. I heard somebody say Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> Thank, you. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You listen to the colors. Yeah. Most of them appreciating you for the work you're doing. Yes, I, I thank the callers so much. I, I just want them to know, know also that um, when I stated before that I, 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 I want to remain focused is that I, I go very little. I, I don't read the newspaper. I don't go on social media uh, a lot. I won't say I don't at all, but I don't go and I don't listen to comments, whether it's positive or negative, because I don't want it to sway me in any way. I, I just want to remain focused on what I have to do because negativity can, it can, it can dishearten you. And the positive, I don't want to get swollen head, big headed by what people are saying, the good things people are saying. So I try not to get caught up with it. I remain focused at all times. So thank you. Continue to pray for me. And I appreciate all your love. Thank you so much for being with us this morning on the Super Morning Show. Liberia's first lady, Madam Claire Mariwea. And I'm sure Liberians appreciate listening to you this morning. We hope we can do this always. No, I'm, I'm, I'm available all the time because I love speaking to my people. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us this morning. Thank you.